Hey everybody, thank you for watching our YouTube channel. I believe this message is going to be a powerful blessing in your life. And I'll be right back at the conclusion to pray for you. Open your Bibles to 1 Peter 5, 7 through 10. Lord, I'm going to pray again. Lord, I thank you <laughs> that you open their ears and their heart to hear what you have to say to them today. And that each and every person would receive what the Spirit is saying in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You know, I had prepared this message, you know, before I even knew what was happening right here in Orlando with, uh, in Orlando with this, we don't even know everything now because I haven't had a chance to check, but this over 50 people dead in this, whatever, whoever did it was used to the devil, I mean, obviously, and, uh, and then this other shooting over there and wars and rumors of wars and all these things that are happening. I thank God for Pastor Ronnie that take, that has us take communion uh, the, the, you know, breaking the bread and the, and the blood and, you know, putting the blood on us, supernatural protection through communion, remembering the Lord, the memorial, and doing all of those things because we're going into time that we cannot allow fear to have any place in our life. I mean, it's always been like that, but especially now because fear gets you to retreat. Fear gets you to back off. Fear paralyzes you. So let me just roll ahead. You have your bulletin. The whole message is right there in the bulletin. Sorry it had to be too font, but um, it's like a joke. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Anyways. Sorry if you're 25, you got to put reading glasses on, but it's going to be all right. And you don't normally wear reading glasses, but it's all right. Just having fun. 1 Peter 5, 7, Amplified. Casting the whole of your care. Wow. Lord, help me get through this whole message without camping too much. Casting your whole of your care, your anxieties, all. Did that say all? Because I'm just, okay. All of your worries and all. Is that word in there again? My goodness. All your concerns once and for all <laughs> on him for he cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. Did you know worrying is meditating on the devil's lie? Listen very close to what I'm saying to you. The Bible's very clear. There's not a person in this place or listening that can't say they haven't had anxiety, they haven't had worry, they haven't had things coming up, fear of the unknown, all of these other things that we can naturally step over into an area of anxiety, fear, and worry. It's a fact. It's a part of life that we tried to get pulled over into, but we have to line up with what the Word of God says. And it tells us that if we cast all of our cares upon the Lord, we have to cast all of our anxieties, all of our worries, all of our concerns because God loves us. So if we are always, listen close to me, church, if you are always in anxiety and always worrying about everything, then you are yielding to an anointing from hell. And whatever you yield to is what you will receive from. Either take it or not, but this is the fact. Do not yield to the devil's anointing. Be well balanced, temperate, sober of mind. Be vigilant and cautious at all times. For your, the enemy of yours, the devil, roams around like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking someone to seize upon and devour. Say, it's not me in Jesus' name. So it's saying if you don't cast your cares on the Lord, if you're always in anxiety, if you're in fear, then you're basically open, opening the door up and the devil is constantly looking for somebody that is yielding to him. This is important, people. Withstanding him, I love this. Withstanding him, why? How do you withstand the devil? Be firm in faith. You need to be firm in faith, not soft in faith, firm in faith. Against the onslaughts, rooted, established, strong, immovable, and determined. Someone said, who am I talking about? Me. You need to throw the me in yourself. I can't do it for you. Uh, knowing that the same identical sufferings are appointed to your brotherhood, the whole body of Christ throughout the world. You're not the only one going through something. And then this next part is very positive. Get ready. You might run around, but just stay in your seat. And after you've suffered a little while... And no one running, no one shouting, no one, no one running in the same direction. Do everything decently and in order. While the God of all grace who imparts all blessing and favor, God gives you all blessing and all favor, 
who has called you to his own eternal glory in Christ Jesus will himself, say himself, complete and make you what you ought to be, established and grounded securely and strengthened and settled in you. Someone says, what ultimately has God wanted me to do? When we yield to him and we yield to his word, he's going to make you what you ought to be. Woo! So do not yield to the devil's anointing through worry and fear and anxiety and all these things. Cast your cares onto the Lord. Even though you don't know how it's all going to work out, you cast your cares on him. Thus, you're yielding to the Lord. And someone says, what's going to happen? Well, according to the word of God, God's going to make you what you ought to be. So who's suffered a little? Then God's going to make you what you ought to be. Just keep praising him. Keep looking up. Get up. Go up. And, and, I mean, get up, look up, and you'll go up. Amen. The Word of God is final authority in your life, not some problem, a situation, or circumstances, or something you're going through. You have to be honest enough to ask yourself a question. What dominates you, fear or faith? You have to ask yourself these questions. And the thing about this is it goes into categories. Healing, for instance. Some people have different areas that they have faith in, and some areas they have fear in, like healing. Like, are you fearful or faithful in healing? Finances, are you fearful or faithful in finances? You see, you either have fear or faith. So you have to ask yourself a question, what is my motive intent and what dominates me? Does faith dominate me or does fear dominate me? That's a question you have to ask yourself. Anxiety and worry are fear motivated. That's why the Bible says cast your cares on the Lord. Anxiety and and worry are fear motivated, and it causes you to yield to a demonic anointing. Guess what? Fear and faith are polar opposites. Totally opposite. Totally 100% opposite. Second Timothy 1.7, for God has not given us the spirit the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. First thing you need to understand is fear is a spirit. It is not your friend. Fear is not your friend. You know, a lot of people have fear, not just fear of failure, they have fear of success. They have a dream, a desire, a vision in their heart they've had for years, but they never step into that area because they actually have a fear of success. Other people have a fear of failure. Fear is of the enemy. It is a spirit. The spirit of fear is, is, is demonic. When fear comes, fear can be paralytic. It can be in different layers. It can be in different strengths. Hello. And you need to rebuke a spirit of fear and yield to what? Yield to power, love, and a sound mind. Matter of fact, 1 John 4.18 says, 1 John 4.18 says, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Someone said, I got a fear problem. You got a love solution. There's a love solution. I got a fear problem. Well, God is love. You need the love solution. His name is Jesus. So if you have a problem with fear, you need to read 1 Corinthians 13 like a hundred times. Get it in your spirit. If you read it in the King James, the word charity is love. Love, love, love. You need to understand the love of God. So perfect love casteth out fear because, ready for this, fear hath torment. Who would, who would agree that fear has torment? Are you kidding me? Fear has extreme torment. And he that feareth is not made perfect in love. You can either say, oh, me, or oh, my. And I think everybody in the body of Christ deals with this. So this is, and if you don't deal with it on a daily basis, it will deal with you. Job 3, 25. Now, I'm not going to preach a whole message of Job. You can study it out. But in Job chapter 3, verse 25, it says, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me. Be very careful. You better face your fear because the thing that you feared the most will come upon you if you yield to that spirit. You have to rebuke that spirit and operate in the exact opposite spirit. You have to, listen to me, church, in every area, 
You know, some people might have a breakthrough in one area and a real hindrance in the other. In every area, if a spirit of fear lifts its ugly head up, you need to tackle that, use the name of Jesus, and you need to go after that thing. This is important. It will hold you back from everything that you do in life. For the thing which I greatly feared upon me has come upon me, and that which I was afraid upon come upon me. Job was thinking his kids were going to go to hell, and they wouldn't, you know, they would sin and all this other stuff. And he opened the door to the enemy. Fear opens the door to the enemy. Fear is the message of the devil. Faith is the message of Christ. Fear is an enemy of God. It is an enemy. Fear is a spirit. How many people know if you're going down the road and you see a provocative billboard or maybe you used to drink and you haven't drank in a long time and then there's a big bottle of Jack Daniels or Colt malt liquor or something on a billboard, all of a sudden a thought might come to you that, hey, why don't you go get a drink? You haven't drank in 20 years, but just a thought will come to you. Well, you can read 2 Corinthians 10. It talks about that. But you're supposed to cast down vain thoughts and imaginations. Or in other words, just because a thought comes to you doesn't mean it's you. You might even think, where in the world did that come from? And seeing the devil will lie to you and tell you, oh, you're a terrible person. No, that ain't my thought. That isn't me. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. That isn't even me. That's the old man. That man died. I can't even believe the devil threw that one at me, that fiery dart. Bless God, I lift up my shield of faith. Take that thing out in the name of Jesus. I'm going to go get someone saved. Fear is yielding to the lies of the devil. Faith is yielding to the word of God. Fear causes torment and brings bondage. Fear is often based on unreal things. Like, I'll give you an instance. You work for a company and you heard they're laying people off. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear they're laying people off? No, I didn't hear that. And you know what? If they're going to lay anybody off, bless God, I've worked my tail off here. But if they're going to lay anybody off, I just know it's going to be me. I'm going to get that slip in my box. I can't believe them. I can't believe they do this to me. I did nothing but good to them. And then you'll just take it. You'll take ownership. And matter of fact, you'll take ownership so much you'll walk in the boss's office and want to strangle them. And you're not even the one getting the pink slip. See, that's what fear does. Fear of the unknown. Wake up in the morning, have a little blot, little like little little cough. You know, you get a little bit, maybe a little hotter than normal, and, and, and you look a little spot on your arm, and then you Google it. Don't Google it. <laughs> Do not Google slight sore throat, te slight temperature, and a red spot on my left hand. Do not Google it. Oh, my God, the spirit of fear is in Google. I'll just tell you right now. All of a sudden, it'll be a rare tropical disease that only affects one in a hundred million people, and the devil will tell you it's you. <laughs> Don't... <laughs> Don't yield to a spirit of fear. Bless God, they're laying people off. I'm probably going to be running the company. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> or my own company. You see, you yield to fear. Fear is a message of the devil. Faith is a message of the church. Okay, here we go. Let's have some fun. Fear, an acronym, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. Or in other words, fear, if you think about it, the exact opposite of what, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but that's faith, right? Or faith is believing in something, according to the Word of God, that you can't see, touch, taste, smell, or hear, but through the eyes of faith and through the Spirit, you reach into the unknown and faith is the eye that sees the invisible. It's the hand that feels the intangible, right? So you reach out into that realm and you pull it in as if you're yours. That's faith. But you know what fear is? 
False evidence appearing real. Fear is like the same thing. Fear is reaching out, grabbing something you can't, you don't know is going to happen. See, see, taste, touch, smell here, and you reach into the realm of the demonic and you pull it into you. That's the same thing. It's yielding. Pastor Ronnie always says, people don't have an anointing problem, they have a yielding problem. What are you yielding to? Faith or fear? I'm going to tell you, this will change your life. This will change your life because it's the Word of God. It'll change your life. Fear is one of the bigger hindrances to people receiving from God. Well, you know, I got this disease and, you know, I've been prayed for 50 times. I'm not going to get prayed for anymore. Bless God, get prayed for 5,000 more times. It does, you just believe God. Fear questions God's Word. Fear will always question God's Word. Did God say? Did God say? Isn't that what the devil did to Eve? Did the Lord say? I don't think he really said that. He, he, it sounded like he said that, but he didn't. It, that's how the devil is. He's a liar. He's right. a loser. Get a big L. Put it on the bottom of your shoe. Walk around. Loser, loser, loser. I mean, let him know. The devil is a liar. If the devil comes to you and tells you you're going to die because he can only lie, that means you're going to live. Is that right? I mean, because he's a liar. He's a father of lies. So if the devil tells you you're going under, you are going over. Sounds good to me. Uh, fear paralyzes, faith energizes. Fear has torment, fear has fear, uh, fear has torment, fear has pain, fear has doubt, fear has unbelief, or fear paralyzes. It could even get to a point that it locks you up. Whereas faith energizes, quickens you by the Spirit, and motivates and mobilizes. Faith mobilizes, fear paralyzes. Faith energizes. Okay, all right. Fear opens the door to the devil. Faith closes it. Hallelujah. Now, I'm not talking about someone in sin. Okay, somebody acting a life, a daily life of sin. You need to repent. You need to repent and get right with God. So, that's just to give me. I'm talking to mature saints here that love God. Everybody declare this. Say, no fear, no fear lives, here. lives here. Now say it like this. When I say no fear lives here, I want you to point to yourself. No fear, no fear lives, here. lives here. No fear, no fear lives, here. lives here. Hallelujah. <laughs> I, I mean, that's just a, a funny little silly exercise, but I felt the faith level just, could, I felt it in the Spirit go up. It's amazing how when you just operate in what the Word of God says, how God does things. It's amazing. And I'm, I'm convinced that people speak, not, speak way more light, death, and light, death and curses over their life than life. I'm, I'm convinced of that. And that's yielding to a lie of a devil. Woo! You know, I, I, tell, I tell this story that Elliot, when Elliot was a little boy, and it's just a great story, that when he was about three years old, he used to be scared of the dark. And, you know, a lot of times kids are scared of the dark. Sometimes adults are still scared of the dark. But anyway, so you're scared of the dark. And so we would go into his room, and, Daddy, please leave the light on. I was like, Elliot, you know, we're not going to leave the light on. And then he would get scared of the dark. I mean, it's a natural thing. Fear is trying to come on him. So we taught Elliot at about three years old, me and Jennifer, 2 Timothy 1, 7, the Lord's not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. So we said, when that tries to come on you, quote 2 Timothy 1, 7. You know, the, spirit, you know, the Lord is not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. He memorized it. So all of a sudden, one night we're sleeping, and about 2 in the morning, we hear a blood-curdling scream, ah! coming. I mean, as parents, you're up, man. It's over. You're standing up in the bed. And then I'm like, what? My wife's like, what? I'm like, what's going on? And then I hear, <laughs> then I hear Elliot's little voice in the background going, the Lord's not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. And I said, I said, hold on. I waited. Then I heard a little less. The Lord oh, is not giving me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. I listened a little longer, didn't hear anything else, so we went to sleep. Or in other words, he was able to overcome a spirit of fear by quoting what the Word of God said. I always tell people, if you're scared of the dark, here's what you need to do. 
Get in your house, notify everybody in the house that you are doing a spiritual experiment right now, so notify everybody. Get in your house, turn the lights out, know where the furniture is, and start running through your house yelling as loud as you can the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus! And it's pitch black. In the name of Jesus! And know where the furniture is so you don't have to call 911 if you go through the coffee table. And deal with that spirit of fear till you are not afraid of the dark anymore. Because being afraid of the dark is being afraid of the unknown. What if somebody's there? What if something's going on? What if... I mean, bless God, you got three shotguns, you got ten locks on the door, and you inspected the place ten times before you went to bed. And a spirit of fear will still try to come at you. And you looked under the bed a hundred times. There's nothing there but a few dust balls. Okay, come on. And maybe the cat that slipped in, but come on. The Lord's not giving you a spirit of fear. So just like you wouldn't yield to a billboard or an alcohol thing and say, whoa, wow, you know, yield to it, you would rebuke it. You don't yield to a spirit of fear when a spirit of fear comes. Do you want to know why people don't give? Fear. Because what if God doesn't really do what He said? I'm convinced many people don't give because they're scared. That's why it's faith. Giving is an act. Giving is a demonstration of faith. And I'm not receiving another offering, but giving is a demonstration of faith. That's what it is. Believe in good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall men give your bosom. That's the golden rule, you know? Treat others as you'd want to be treated, and they're going to treat you that way. Or in other words, in the world, you know, what goes around comes around, because I wasn't raised in church. So, you know, all the, there's, there's spiritual truths said different ways. What goes around comes around. Yeah, that's right. Whatever you sow, you'll reap. That's right. I love it when people say that. It's a perfect entry into preach the gospel. Man, you're preaching the Bible. What? Yeah, you say what goes around comes around. That's Bible. Really? Yeah. Whatever you sow, you reap. You been to Bible school? Praise God. You're good. <laughs> I know another great story from Pastor Rodney. Pastor Rodney said he had a fear of heights. Terrible fear of heights. Terrible fear of heights. Even up six feet, terrible fear of heights. And I haven't heard him tell this story in a long time. But he said when he was young and he was going to go in the ministry and knew he was called of God, he knew he could not allow that spirit to have access in his life. He knew because that same spirit that would not allow you to go up in heights is the same spirit that's going to stop you when the Lord gives you a gift of the spirit. Or to step out rent Madison Square Gardens or whatever. It's the same thing that will hold you back in, in, a, in being scared of the dark. Will be the same thing that keeps you from doing what God tells you to do with the things of God. So he said, I'm not going to let that spirit have my life. So he went in, in, I don't know what town it was in South Africa, but he found a hotel that had a big glass elevator on the outside of it that went all the way up real high. So you could look out the glass elevator and look down. He said, I'm dealing with a spirit of fear. I'm taking this thing out. This thing will never have dominion over me again. And he got in that elevator. He said he got in that elevator, stood all the way up against the glass, put his head up against the glass, and looked down and pushed the top floor. In the name of Jesus, in the name. People getting on and off. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. God's not giving you a spirit of fear. He said he read the, rode the elevator half the day. Can you imagine people getting in and out of that elevator? Ooh, you know, this guy's a little out there. I mean, there's a guy in the elevator mumbling to himself, looking down for like half a day. Imagine if they had security cameras back then. I mean, he'd have been <laughs> taken out within maybe 30 minutes. But, but he said, I'm not going to let a spirit of fear have me. He said after he rode that elevator for a half a day, standing there looking down, that spirit of fear left him, and he has no spirit, uh, spirit of fear of heights left him, and he has no problem with high places ever again. Hallelujah! The Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Whatever you are scared of, you better face it. And you can face it in the name of Jesus. You know, we have a little farm in our house, and, you know, we do what's called granging. That means our kids run around the whole property. I mean, broccoli starts coming up. They just grab it right off and eat the flowers. It's phenomenal. It's, it's cool stuff. I mean, other people come out there, they got their hand sanitizers, you know, walking out there, you know, 
sanitize. You try to hand them a moringa leaf for a leaf, and they're like, you thought the plague just came. <laughs> it's amazing. Everybody's at a different level, you know? Man, that looked like it had a little caterpillar or aphid on him. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, praise God. Now, I'm, I'm, you do use wisdom, okay? You do use wisdom, but I'm just saying. 2 Kings 17, verses 38 and 39. In the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, and you shall not fear other gods. Listen to this. You shall not fear other gods, but the Lord your God you shall reverently fear then he will deliver you out of the hands of all your enemies. The only one who we are to fear is God, and even then it's not a fear of fright. It's a reverential fear. So we have a fear or a respect for God, but we fear no other gods. I mean, you go to India and some of these other places, they've got 300 million gods. I tell you, I see Christians all the time. They can't even be around any of that. It's like they feel they're going to get infected. Oh, there's a Buddhist temple. Oh, shut it up. Yeah, I mean, give me a break. None of those gods can hurt you. None of those gods can touch you. None of those false gods have any place in your life. They have no power at all over you. Zero. They're not even gods. They're gods in your mind. They're not even real. They're dead, all of them. But you know what? You're not to fear other gods. Amen. You reverentially fear the only God, Jehovah, that sent his son, Jesus. Amen. Deuteronomy 31.6, be strong and of good courage. And then what does it say? Fear not. Nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, it is he that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee nor forsake thee. When you face fear and you operate in faith and do what God says, you're not going to fail. God is going to be with you and he's going to help you. Can you say amen? amen? Joshua, of course, we could camp on all these. Joshua 10, verse 20, chapter 10, verse 25. And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's powerful. Yes. Now, I want to talk just a little bit because we're going to talk about fear. I just need to talk a little bit about faith. And, you know, Hebrews, you know, of course, Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. What are you hoping for? What do you believe in God for? What are you putting your faith out for? Faith begins where the will of God is known. I mean, not just for the sake of new people here, the will of God is this. It's the Bible. You have to know what the Bible says. If somebody does you wrong and you think, I want to kill them, then the Bible tells us, thou shalt not kill. So you know the will of God is not to take somebody out that did wrong to you. Okay, so, I mean, so the will of God, you need, faith begins where the will of God is known. And then in the unknown area, you need to get, let peace be the umpire of your heart. you got to find out, like, if you're not married, who am I going to marry? If you're going in the ministry, where, where do I go? What missions, what city, what town, whatever. I mean, all these, do I take this job? Do I not take this job? then once you get faith and you hear from God, once you know that that's what God is saying, then you can have faith for it. There's a lot of good ideas, but they're not all God ideas. So Pastor Ronnie, I'm going to tell you how he is. He, he will not do anything till he hears from God, but when he hears from God, like he says, he'll charge de hell with a dry water pistol. Once he knows it's God, it's over. But you got to know it's God. You guys with me? Faith refuses doubt. Godly boldness is fearless. You see somebody operating off the gifts many times. You sit in your seat. You grab your seat thinking, I cannot believe that person just did that or said that. Because godly boldness, boldness is fearless. Hello. The devil, listen, this is something, a message I have. I'm not preaching that message right now, but... It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things seen. One thing I know for sure is the devil's a hope thief. Here's a word that people use, well, it's hopeless. See, you're either hopeful or hopeless, right? Hopeless? It's a hopeless. I mean, there's no way out. You know, I mean, I've tried. It's hopeless. Yeah, 
Listen, the devil is a hope thief. Faith is a substance of things hoped for. So let's say you have no hope. Then where are you at? Then you really have no faith. We're dealt a measure of faith. I'll talk about that. But I mean, basically, without hope, you don't have faith. So the devil's a hope thief. So somebody gets sick, the first thing he tells them, you're going to die. I mean, that, that's, what, that's, where the, that's what he's going to say. Ultimately, what is the mission statement of the devil? The mission statement in hell is steal, kill, destroy. That's his mission statement. If you have a business, you have a mission statement. This, is, this mission statement of this church is it's a local church with a global vision. So the mission statement defines who you are or who your business is. You guys probably should come to Kingdom Business Fellowship. So the mission statement of the devil is he, uh, he would say, I have come to steal, kill, and destroy. And he mounts it in hell, and every demon in hell reads that mission statement, and that is the devil's job. So if you've ever been stole from, if the devil's ever tried to kill you, if the devil's already tried to destroy you, then he is fulfilling his mission statement against you as a roaring lion. Probably has a picture of a terrible lion roaring right next to his mission statement, and the thing has dentures, doesn't even have real teeth. Because he's as a roaring lion. He's not really a lion. We serve. The true lion of the tribe of Judah. We don't serve a toothless lion that acts like he's from the tribe of Judah and he's not. I, anyways, I better just keep going. Okay. So the devil's a hope thief. So here's what I'm saying. If the devil can get you hopeless, he can get you faithless. It's hopeless. Yeah, it's faithless too. You'll never get it. How do you get hope back? Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the Word of God. So you get faith by studying the Word of God. You're getting faith right now. You're getting a faith lift. Yeah. <laughs> Who needs a faith lift? Come on, amen. I didn't say face lift. I said faith lift. I just th- th- had the th in there. Did the th. Anyways, I better roll on. The devil cannot steal your hope without your permission. Do you guys see how the enemy operates? Any good person in military or in strategy or in war knows that you have to understand who your enemy is. Okay. Circumstances in life can be hope thieves if you allow them to. Remember, two things are going to happen. Fear will rise up or faith will rise up. Your choice. Romans 8, 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But if hope that is seen is not hope, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. God makes a promise, faith believes it, hope anticipates it, and patience quietly awaits for it. Someone said, I don't have a problem with that. I just want patience and I want it now. So I'll read that again. God makes a promise. Faith believes it. That's the easy part. Oh, praise God. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Hope anticipates it. Well, it's, gonna, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. But then patience awaits for it. And that, how many people know patience is a fruit of the Spirit? Lord, I need patience and I need it now. In Jesus' name. You said anything I ask in your name. Okay, anyways, all right. Proverbs 13, 12. Oh, listen to this. This is very important. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick. But when the desire come, it is a tree of life. The devil doesn't have any problem telling you sometimes that you'll even get what you're believing God for. He'll just tell you it's not now. Hope deferred Make it the heart sick, like the woman that, that, you know, in 2 Kings 4, 8, her greatest desire was to have a son, and she built a prophet's chamber. And I think you shared, I think you maybe shared along 4, 2 Kings 4 or whatever. But you know what? When, when she built the house for the man of God and all that, that she yielded to the anointing and got her to heart's desire. But she said to him, do not lie to your handmaiden, or in other words, Hope deferred makes a heart sick. Her heart had become sick because she had a desire and a dream that she died to. 
It was too painful because it hadn't come to pass. Hope deferred makes your heart sick. But when it comes, it's a tree of life. Or in other words, your dreams are never too dead for a resurrection. Allow the God of all hope to bubble up in you. Who needed to hear this today? I needed to hear this today. I think all of us need to hear this. This is the Bible. Hallelujah. Hope deferred makes a heart sick. But when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. Fear or faith, what are you speaking? Uh, you can only answer that question yourself. Fear or faith, what are you speaking? Proverbs 18, 21, and that's not in your bulletin, but death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Make no mistake about it. You speak faith or you speak fear, and the proof is in your tongue. What do you think about that, Elliot? Is it true? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. You are a result of what you spoke yesterday. Hello. You need to change your confession. You know, Charles Capps had a, a, had a revelation of that when he read Kenneth Hagin's book, Kenneth E. Hagin's book. You know, the bottom line is, regardless of your situations and circumstances, you have to speak the word of faith. You have to speak the word of faith. Or you speak the word of doubt and unbelief. You speak faith or you speak fear. And I'm going to read this scripture again. Hope deferred. See, some people have hope, but it's, it's never going to come to pass because it's so far down. Hope is, faith is the substance things hope for, believing in something that as if it's tangibly there already, even though you can't touch it, taste it, smell it, hear it, or see it, but it's as if you actually really already have it. That's faith. And you can do that through the eye of the Spirit. Are you guys with me? But fear says, you know what, you're going to get it, but it's not for a while. And you don't actually see it as if you have it now. Am I communicating properly? Are you guys with me? Or in other words, hope deferred makes a heart sick. Elliot, you got a story for us? Can you help us with this? I'm going to ask my son to tell a story. And, uh, you know, Elliot, the Bible says hope deferred makes a heart sick. And uh, I heard the enemy had a board meeting, and he was, he, he was talking to some of his demons about some things. Can you come on over here and maybe tell, tell the people out there, they need to hear what's going on, and uh, just talk about that. So, the devil and his little demons were having a meeting, <laughs> and the devil was saying, we have to stop these Christians from winning the, from soulening and multiplying we have to stop them and one of the little demons raised his hand and said me 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 he said we can tell them that there's no heaven and there's just a hell and he was like no the bible talks a lot about hell and then the other demon raised his hand and said me 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 me, me. <laughs> i'll tell them that there's no heaven and then the devil was like, no, the devil, the, the Bible talks a lot about heaven. And then one of the demons in the way back said, slowly raised his hand and said, me. They will tell him that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And God did die on the cross for them. And they can, if they call upon his name, they can be saved. And the devil was like, no, why would we tell him the truth? And then he, the demon said, I'm not yet finished, but we would tell him. They can always do it tomorrow. They can always put it off. They have their whole life. And so that was the demon of procrastination, the enemy of time. Or in other words, the devil, when he was looking for someone to use, he picks a demon called procrastination, which is the enemy of time. Or in other words, the devil has no problem telling you you can have it, but you just can't have it now. You can have it later. The devil can tell you, you know, for instance, about soul winning. Oh, I know I'm supposed to win souls, but you know what? I'm going to wait till I just get a little bit more of the Word of God in me, and then I'm going to launch out. 
The Bible says, do not say that there is four months, then cometh the harvest, for today is the day of salvation. Or in other words, the devil thought the way that he would take people out was he would actually tell them, like he did when he spoke to Jesus, and when Jesus was tempted, he quoted the devil, quoted the Bible three times. It is written, it is written, it is written. The devil quoted the Bible. He did. He quoted the Word. To the Word made flesh. I mean, he knew the Word. So the devil will even use Scripture. So the devil will tell you, oh yeah, you can have all of that. But there's no rush. I mean, come on, you're a busy person. You can have all that, Tommy. Don't even worry about it right now. You're going to get it later. And then hope deferred makes the heart sick. Eventually it gets to a point that later is too far away. Or in any ways, this story goes like when the devil was looking to take Christians out. The demon of procrastination, which is the enemy of time, said, tell him we're going to give him everything the Bible says, but it's just later. Do you know why people don't get saved? They're going to get saved, but they're going to wait till they're old. They're going to party all their life and get saved at 80 years old. And the Bible tells us that is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. What if that person was in Orlando last right. night right. where 50 people plus just died? Did you see what I'm saying? So the devil puts things off. Hope deferred makes a heart sick. Or in other words, the devil is a hope thief. Do not let him steal your hope. Do not let him steal your dreams. Hallelujah. John 10.10, 10, the thief cometh only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I come that thou may have life and life more abundantly. So what's Jesus' mission statement? To give you life and life more abundantly. He's talking about eternal life. Do you know you're going to live forever? Do you know your spirit lives forever? Every person in here will live forever. Your body, can I tell you something funny? I've been wanting to say this for a long time. You go back in the days when Pastor Rodney was real big before he lost 160 pounds. He had a saying he used to say. Maybe I shouldn't even tell you guys because it's, it goes way back. Who wants to say on? Who wants to hear it? I mean, he was, you know, obviously from traveling and all that stuff, you know, 160 pounds heavier. And you guys all know the story of him, you know, taking that devil out, and uh, he used to even joke around sometimes under the anointing, he would say something, and sometimes he would sing a song, and McCurdy came up with a song for it, and this goes way back. He said, Pastor Ronnie, because he was fighting this devil of weight, you know, and he would said, I'm going to flip this flab forever. I'm going to flip this flab forever, and then McCurdy writes a song, flip the flab forever. We never put it on an album. But I'm going to flip this flab forever. Someone says, what does that have to do with anything? Nothing. I just thought it's funny. <laughs> but how many people know he didn't put it so far in the future because he actually did it? That's faith. <laughs> Who would be willing to say, I'm going to flip this flab forever? Okay, a few hands went up. Okay, well, then you can do it. Come on now. Remember, hope deferred makes a heart sick. Don't have a donut after the service. Okay, it was all right. <laughs> I better finish. Jesus, help me. <laughs> Anyways, okay. James 2.20. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Listen very close to me. It's like a Bible school student coming to Bible school saying, the Lord told me not to work. I'm supposed to live by faith. You are a granola bar. You're flake. Now, if you're an international student, you can't legally work. That's a little different of a situation. But if you're a student that's a healthy student, and you can work. I'm going to say this to everybody. If you can work, you should work. Because the Bible says, whatever you put your hand to shall prosper. Yes. I mean, faith without works is dead. You can call it in. Oh, someone's going to give me a million dollars. Praise God. Someone's going to give me a million dollars. I'll tell you, listen, you bless God, I'm going to get an idea from God. And you can't even get out of your bed. I mean, you're not going to get nothing. Show me your faith, and I'll say, show me your works. Faith without works is dead. Or in other words, when you desire something, you got to move in the direction, and God will do the rest. Faith is a movement, and when you stop, you become a monument. Faith moves. Faith acts. Faith doesn't sit and stay. You become a monument. If you talk more about what happened in the past than the future, you're not in faith. If you talk about all the good old days and everything you've done, but you never talk a vision about what's coming in the future, you're not in faith. You're a monument. You're a monument. Faith is a movement. 
I love summer camp meeting, accelerate. That's what it's called, accelerate. Woo! Moses didn't see miracles until he obeyed and confronted Pharaoh. The willing and the obedient will eat the good of the land. It wasn't until Moses actually faced Pharaoh and said, let my people go, that he saw a miracle. He didn't say, oh, Lord, I hope Pharaoh will like me. No, he ain't going to like you. He's going to try to kill you. Some people will try to kill you, and God will use that situation to propel you into what you're supposed to be. Come on. Joshua didn't see the walls of Jericho fall down until he marched around it seven times, kept his mouth shut, and then shouted. Come on. It's the shout that'll take you out. It's the shout that will take you over. It's a shout of faith that will enter you into the promised land and into your miracle. It's the shout of thanksgiving. It's the shout of faith. It's not the word of doubt. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Are you faith full or are you faith empty? How's your faith tank? Well, hopefully it's getting fuller, filling up right now. Everybody say this. Say, no fear fear. lives here. here. No fear fear. lives here. here. No fear fear. lives here. here. Left, right, left, right. If you're in the military, forget about it. Okay, no fear lives here. Make a cadence to that. That would be cool. And then don't ever say, I don't have any faith, because you're a liar. Because Bible tells us in Romans 12, 3, God has dealt every man a measure of faith. Everyone has a fa- measure of faith. Everybody has a seed of faith from God. Everybody. Can you say amen? amen. But see, the thing about a seed of faith is it's your job to grow it, not God's. Amen. It's nev- don't ever pray, oh, Lord, give me more faith, because it's not scriptural. He's already given you a measure of faith. Someone says, well, God, give me more faith. Okay, here's how you get more faith. Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the Word of God. So if you want to increase your faith, you got to get in the Word of God. That's how you increase your faith. If you won't read your Bible and listen to the Bible and you won't do that, then you get no more faith. If you operate in fear and don't move forward towards something, you get no more faith. Unless you have the gift of faith, and that's a whole other deal. That's different. Man, I'm, I'm hitting a lot of stuff here today. Hebrews 11.6 says, but without faith it's impossible to please him, for he that comes as a God must believe he is, and he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. If you diligently seek God, Amen. God will reward you. Who likes rewards? Yeah. Well, then if you diligently seek him, you'll reward him. And the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So in other words, feed your faith and you'll starve your doubts. If you feed your faith, your doubt will starve to death. Say this, say, no fear fear lives here. here. No fear fear lives here. here. No fear fear lives here. here. So when someone asks you, like, on your drive home, what did you learn in church today? Hopefully you'll at least get that down. (laughs) What was the message today? That's right. That's the way it's supposed to work. How many of you have ever drove home and asked your kids, what did you learn in children's church? And they did... I mean, we got a great children's church, but children are like that sometimes, you know? And then finally you give them a little nugget and they'll do the whole thing, but hopefully you'll get this one. No fear lives here. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Luke, well, Jesus, help me. And he is. Luke 1, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Or in other words, there is nothing that you are going through right now that God does not understand and God does not provide a way of escape for you. Always remember that God always has a way out. God is on your side. God is for you. He is not against you. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are faithful or faith empty. We are fearful or fear empty. What is your tank? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I, I want to I read this scripture because I love it so much. I told you the devil's a hope thief. Hope deferred makes a heart sick. But Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. 
Or in other words, God, the God of hope, can fill you with his joy. If you are believing God for something, let me just tell you something. If you are in faith, there's a joy that comes with it. True faith or true faith with hope has a joyful expectation. That is why the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. Someone said, there he goes again. No, because a cheerful giver is operating scripturally. A cheerful giver actually believes God is going to do what he said. They know it, and that is the realm you got to get to in everything that you do. May the God of hope fill you with joy or an expectation that you're coming through what you're going through and you are going to fulfill everything that God is telling you to do. And the devil could go to hell and God is on your side. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I am faithful. I am not faith empty. Say that. I say I'm faithful. I'm faithful. I am not faith empty. Not say no fear lives here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's faithful? <laughs> I want everyone to bow your head and close your eyes. You know, you come with a message like this, which is totally the Bible, totally tons of scriptures. And then there's people in this place. Let me tell you something. Jesus said, in his word that Jesus said that whosoever calls upon his name shall be saved. So if you're in this place and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me just tell you something. It's a matter of you just believing what the word of God says in the midst of your sin, in the midst of your lifestyle, in the midst of whatever you're at. And the Bible says the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Or in other words, God has a gift for you right now. You either take it or not. You don't have to take it. But he has a gift he wants to give you. Who believes if God has a gift he wants to give you, you should take it. It's a gift from God. And that gift from God is his son, Jesus Christ. If you're in this place or listening by way of television and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I am here to tell you, you will face the master of destiny. You will face the King of kings and Lord of lords. You will, fa you will face the Alpha and Omega. You will face the creator of all things. And he will bring back to remembrance this very day to you right now. You choose life or you choose death today. And that is eternal life or eternal death that I'm talking about because our spirit will live forever. If you're in this place and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you need to call upon his name today. Someone said, who am I speaking to? I'm actually talking right to you. And if we got to come and grab you and shake you in your seat, we will. But the Holy Spirit will do that. If you are not saved, if you are not born again, you might have came here just to get food, and there's nothing wrong with that, and you'll still get your food. But a year's spiritual food that you'll never eat or drink or thirst again, which is manna from heaven. And if you call upon his name, he will save you, deliver you, and fill the void in your heart that only he can fill. But you have to reach out by faith and say, you know what, I will take that gift. I might have tried to take that gift before and I never did, but this time I'm going to take it and I'm going to fulfill what God's called me to do. So if you're in this place, will you listen to the Word of God? Will you reach out and receive that free gift? I pray you will because we're not promised it tomorrow. We're not promised that that gift will even come tomorrow because we might not be here. So if you're not saved, this call is for you. Saved from eternal damnation. That's what saved means. Born again, born anew, become a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old has passed away and the new has come. God is speaking to you. God is talking to you right now. Will you obey? Will you listen? I pray you will. And then others in here that are saved. Listen very close to me. You are saved, but you're not serving God like you used to. For instance, being fearful. There's many people that do nothing for God because they're paralyzed by fear. You know, if you're not moving or going forward with the things of God, let me tell you what that's called. That's called backslidden. Because if you're a Christian in here and you are not moving forward with the things of God, then you have become a monument. You have basically went backwards. If you're in this place and, you, and you've grown cold, you're not red hot on fire for God like you used to. Maybe someone's talked about you. Maybe you've had a bankruptcy. Maybe you've had a financial situation. Maybe a pastor, a preacher 
said something wrong to you. I don't know. Maybe a loved one did something terrible to you. Maybe something happened that caused you to cool off. Well, I'm here to tell you there's a God that loves you, a God that's on your side, a God that's ready to forgive you, a God that's willing to give you a second chance. But you have to reach out and obey and say, yes, Lord, I take it all to the altar. I give you every area of my life. I want to be red hot on fire again. Jesus told the church, the Laodicean church, you're either hot or cold, but because you're in the middle, because you're lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Make no mistake about it. Coming to church, even the river, does not ensure you a seat in heaven. You must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Jesus is the Son of God. And you must be red hot. You cannot cool off. You cannot cool off. You have to stir up that gift in you. You have to stay red hot. If you're not red hot in this place, and you're not serving Jesus, winning souls with everything that you have, then you need to be obedient to God. We are living in the last days, people. You need to bring it to the altar and put it on the altar. If you're actively involved in sin, you need to bring it to the table. If you constantly deal with a sin every day or at least every month or every two months and you can't get free of it, I don't want to know what it is. Jesus knows what it is. Then you need to obey and you need to bring it to the altar. You need to get real with God. And I'm speaking passionately. This is God speaking through me. He wants to save you. He wants to set you free. He wants to deliver you. He has a gift for you. Please take it. Or if you're in this place and the devil's always lying to you, telling you you're not saved. If you fit into any one of those three categories, will you obey God today? I'm telling you, God is here. He wants you to obey. If you fit into any one of those three categories, without any hesitation, with every head bowed and eyes closed, with nobody looking around, without any hesitation, put your hand to heaven now in Jesus' name. Put your hand to heaven now in Jesus' name. Do it now. Put your hand up if you fit into any one of those three categories. Do it now. The Lord's speaking to people, even believers. You've grown cold. You've grown lukewarm. Listen, things are only going to get hotter. Things are only going to get tougher in the world, in the world. But for the believer, God will sustain you and God's hand is on you. But you've got to be pure. You've got to be righteous. You've got to be holy. You've got to be quick to repent, and you've got to be on the potter's wheel and say, mold me and shape me and do with me whatever you will. Not my will, but your will will be done. Come on, God's speaking to some more people. Put your hands up. Do it right now. You're not red hot on fire. You're, not, you're cold. If you're out hanging with your friends that aren't Christians, they don't even know you're a Christian. There's other people. Come on. You can't be, praise God, hallelujah in church and out there running with the world tomorrow. That's not, that's not what God's looking for. That's called lukewarm. You will be spat out of his mouth. Come on. Let's make a fresh dedication today. I want everybody to put your hands down and everybody look at me. Everybody put your hands down, open your eyes, look at me. If you're in this section, you know, the Bible says where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. So in other words, Jesus is here. You understand that? Jesus is here right now. Looking at you right now, looking at your heart. The Bible says, are they not all minister and spirits sent forth for those that shall be heirs of salvation? You even have angels standing by you. They're not going to lead you to the Lord, but I believe they're smacking you upside the head with their wings saying, you better listen to this guy. If you're in this place and you didn't raise your hand in this section and you would like to be included in this prayer for those three calls, put your hand up now, right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Who else? Come on. I'll come back there and grab you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Now, I won't really do it because it's called a free will thing, but you need to put your hand up. Put your hands down. In this little pie section and across the whole center, you didn't put your hand up, but you want to be included in this prayer for those three calls. Put it up now in Jesus' name. Do it now in Jesus' name. Someone said, why are you talking so urgently? Because we're not promised it tomorrow. Jesus could come back in an hour. I don't know when he's coming back, but I do know he's coming back. You need to be ready now. Lift your hand. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Who else? Come on, put it up. Thank you. Who else? Come on. Put it up. In this section, thank you, guys, ladies, gentlemen. Thank you so much. You're lifting your hand to the creator of heaven and earth. How cool is that? I mean, come on. That is so cool. In this section right here, you didn't raise your hand, but you were supposed to. Put it up now. Do it. Now, thank you. You want to be included in the prayer. 
Thank you. You can put your hands down. Lastly, this section. You didn't raise your hand, but you knew you were supposed to. God is speaking to you. Put it up now in Jesus' name. Want to be included in this prayer for these three calls? Put it up now. Come on. Who back here? Put it up. Who is that back there? Put it up right now. Who's the Lord speaking to? The guy going like this. Is that a hand up or what is that? Is that you? That's you. Go like this. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. In this section right here, lift your hand up. If you lifted your hand up, come on. Come on down here right now. Come on. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Get out of your seat. Get up. If you lifted your hand, God saw you. Come. 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 Get out of your seat. Come. Come, brother. Come. You raised your hand to Jesus. He saw it. Come on. Faith without works is dead. Come. Others, come. Remember, faith is an action. Faith is an action. Come on. Come on. There's others. There's others. Come. 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 He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. Come on. He's calling. He's calling. He's calling. Come on. Come on. Come on. There's more. There's others, there's others, there's others. Get out of your seat. Give him your life today. Keep coming, keep coming. Come on to Jesus. Let him have that means everybody else's red hat on fire, winning souls. Look at your neighbor right now. Say, if you died right now, do you know for sure you go to heaven? If they blink. You grab them and bring them up here. You guys sing again. Ask them. Ask them right now. Ask them. Ask them. And bring them. Come on. Bring them up. If they blink, you come with them. Come. Come on. If they can't say yes, bring them. Bring them. Hallelujah. There's others. Come on, come on. Woo! Where are you? Come on. There's one more. There's one more. Come on. There's one more. There's one more. There's one more. Come on. There's one more. There's one more. Come on. Who is that? Where are you? Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're still coming. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you've not come to man, but you've come because God, by His Spirit, has led you here. Whatever call you're here for, I don't, I don't know whether it's salvation for the first time, rededication, making sure, I'm not sure which one of the three calls you came, but I know that the Holy Ghost led you here. And I know one prayer fits all. And I know God means, if you mean business with God, God means business with you. And I'm just going to tell you something. Your life is not over. You can still fulfill everything God called you to do regardless of what's happened in your life. God has never given up on you and he's never forsaken you and he has been nothing but good to you and the devil's a liar and he's been nothing but bad to you. You're going to blame someone, blame the right person, blame the devil. But God's on your side. And you're going to fulfill everything God called you to do. And we're going to say a prayer, but you know what? We're going to see if you're here next week. Because you know why? The devil doesn't want you in an atmosphere like this. He does not want you in an atmosphere of faith like this. Because you are dangerous to his kingdom. You're dangerous to his kingdom. Do you understand what I'm saying, bro? You are dangerous to the devil's kingdom when you're on fire for God. You set 10 alarm clocks. I don't care what you do. Get a big tub of water. Pour it over your head. I don't care what it takes. You get in here every time the doors are open, and you say, bless God, I'm going to fulfill what God called me to do. And I'm going to bring some other people with me. Shut up, devil. I'm going to bring some other people with me. You should have never messed with me. 
my family. She never mess with me. She would never mess with me. I'm going to be like Saul. I'm going to turn into a Paul. I'm going to preach the gospel everywhere. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Love you guys. I am passionate, and I'm not going to apologize for it. Because God loves you, and he sent his only son to die just for you. Just for you. So close your eyes and lift your hands to heaven. Lift both of them. Come on, lift your lightning rods to heaven. Bless God. One prayer fits all. I want you to say this. Say, dear Lord Jesus, please forgive me of all my sins. Lord, I'm so sorry. Thank you. You never gave up on me. I love you, Lord. I repent. I turn my back on the devil and on sin. Right now, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for me. I believe three days later, you raised up from the dead for me. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus is my Lord. Right now, now fill me with a mighty baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Fill me up with the Holy Ghost. Pour all the junk out of me. Pour all the doubt out of me. Pour all the unbelief out of me. And fill me up with the Holy Spirit. Fill me up. With the Holy Ghost, right now, and the fire of God, I receive it right now. Ha ha. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now say this. Say, I am saved. I am born again. Now listen to these words. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. I have a fresh start. I have a new beginning. I'm born again. Um, it's going to sound a little different, but a new. Um, a new. Um, a new. Um, new. Hallelujah. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Now say this. Say, I can do all things. Come on, bro. Through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. All things. 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 Now give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory out of If you prayed that prayer, that means you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We want to hear from you. Go to our website at revival.com and you can email us a prayer request. Tell us that you watch the YouTube channel. We really love to interact with you and send you something that's going to help you in your walk with Christ. And then of course you can continue to watch every service is taken and uploaded. Either we are live on YouTube or you can watch it on a rerun as we edit the messages down. And I pray that this YouTube channel is a special blessing to you. I'd love to hear from you. I want to interact with you. You can follow me on Facebook, on my Twitter account, my Periscope account, Instagram, whatever. Uh, all the links are found on revival.com, which is the best place to go. So let's just pray over you right now that the Lord would touch you and empower you and then become proactive in the kingdom that God use you in a powerful way to bring in the harvest of souls. And I pray for His anointing to touch you. Father, touch every one of our friends watching on YouTube. Raise them up to be mighty men and women of God and use them to impact their generation, we pray. Heal, restore, renew, revive them even now. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Thank you for watching. Keep watching and interact with us. We want to hear from you. We love you. If you'd like to be a part together with us, then support this ministry and sow a seed. Revival.com. There's a drop down box, online giving, or there's an address on the screen. You can send a love gift to our ministry. Help be a part together with us in the Great Awakening as we travel across America and around the world, lighting fires. So we'd love to hear from you and your financial support is greatly appreciated. From all of us here, we love you. Thank you for being a part.